Hello, prudent savers. Today, we're going to dive into the world of frugal living. It's a world that's packed with the promise of financial freedom, peace of mind, and the joy of knowing that every penny you earn is put to good use. It's about being smart, not stingy, and making the most of what you have. Now, we all know that embarking on this journey can be a bit daunting, but don't worry. We're here to help you navigate through it with 10 easy-to-follow tips. We'll talk about the benefits of using cash instead of cards, the art of selling your stuff, the power of coupons, and how to reduce grocery shopping. We'll also explore the wisdom of canceling unused subscriptions, shopping with a list, doing it yourself whenever possible, caring for your car, consolidating your debts, and the magic of meal planning. So, stick around to discover these 10 easy-to-follow frugal living tips to help you save money. Hello viewers, if you are enjoying this content, and you do not want to miss future videos filled with even more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Hit that subscribe button now to stay tuned with us and remember to comment and share. First, let's talk about the power of using cash instead of cards. When it comes to managing your finances, the method of payment you choose can make a significant difference. The convenience of swiping a card or tapping a smartphone might seem appealing, but have you ever considered the psychological impact that these methods of payment have on your spending habits? Let's delve a bit deeper into this. When you use a credit or debit card, the transaction feels abstract, almost as if you're not spending real money. It's just a swipe or a tap, and voila, you've made a purchase. This detachment from the physical act of handing over your hard-earned cash can often lead to increased and unnecessary spending. It's easy to lose track of how much you're spending when you're not physically seeing the money leave your wallet. Now let's contrast this with using cash. There's a certain tangibility that comes with handing over a $20 bill and receiving change. This physical exchange can make the act of spending feel more real, more concrete. It's harder to part with something you can hold in your hand, isn't it? Moreover, using cash can help you budget more effectively. When you go shopping with a set amount of cash, you're forced to prioritize your purchases, discerning between needs and wants. This can help you avoid frivolous spending, allowing you to save more in the long run. Now, this doesn't mean you should never use your cards. They can be handy for emergencies and can offer benefits like rewards and cash backs. However, for everyday spending, it may be worth considering a more cash-centric approach. So the next time you go shopping, consider leaving your cards at home and bringing just enough cash. You might be surprised at how much less you spend when you feel the weight of each dollar leaving your hand. It's a simple yet effective step towards frugality and smarter financial management. Our second tip involves turning your clutter into cash. Picture this. Your closet is bursting with clothes you no longer wear, your garage is filled with tools you haven't used in forever, and your shelves are lined with books you've already read. These items are not just taking up space, they're untapped potential for extra money. Selling items you no longer need or use can be a fantastic way to boost your savings. Not to mention it's a great way to declutter your space, leading to a more organized and stress-free environment. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. You're saving money and improving your quality of life at the same time. Now, you might be wondering, where can I sell my stuff? Well, there are countless platforms available today that make selling used items a breeze. Websites like eBay, Craigslist, or Facebook Marketplace are excellent places to start. These platforms have a vast user base, increasing the chances of your items getting noticed and sold. For clothes, consider Poshmark or Depop. These apps are dedicated to fashion and have a community of buyers ready to snatch up your stylish pieces. If you've got old books gathering dust, try Bookscouter. This platform lets you compare book prices from over 35 buyback vendors to ensure you get the most bang for your buck. And don't forget about local options like garage sales or local swap meets. These can be a fun and social way to offload items while making some cash. Remember to price your items reasonably. A good rule of thumb is to sell them for about half of what they would cost new depending on their condition. And always be honest about any wear and tear. Transparency builds trust with buyers, leading to more successful sales. So start rummaging through your closets, exploring your attic, or diving into your garage. You might just find a gold mine of items ready to be converted into cash. Let's not let our unused stuff go to waste. Remember, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Third on our list is the classic money-saving tip using coupons. Now, some of you might be thinking, coupons, really? And to that we say, absolutely. 
Coupons are a tried and true method of saving some serious cash, especially when it comes to grocery shopping. These little slips of paper or their digital counterparts represent free money. Yes, you heard it right, free money. Imagine this, you're standing in the supermarket, your cart is full and you're ready to check out. You hand over a couple of coupons you've collected and voila, your total reduces by a significant amount. That's the power of coupons. But where do you find these magical money savers? Well, they're all around you. You can find them in your mail, in newspapers and magazines. Some stores even hand them out at the entrance. But the real gold mine is online. Websites and apps dedicated to coupons are aplenty. Some grocery stores have their own apps that not only allow you to digitally clip coupons, but also keep track of your savings. Remember, the key to effective couponing is organization. Keeping your coupons sorted by product type or expiration date can save you from the disappointment of a missed deal. And don't forget to always read the fine print. Some coupons are store-specific, while others might require you to buy in bulk. Another trick of the trade is to combine coupons with in-store sales. This strategy, known as stacking, can lead to some impressive savings. For instance, if a product is on sale for half the price and you have a coupon for a dollar off, you're essentially getting the product for even less. So, before your next shopping trip, spend a little time hunting for coupons. It might seem like a bit of work, but the savings you'll see at the checkout will make it all worth it. And who knows, you might even find couponing to be a fun and rewarding hobby. So, before your next shopping trip, Spend a little time hunting for coupons. Tip number four is all about reducing the frequency of your grocery shopping. Have you ever noticed how a quick trip to the grocery store for a carton of milk can quickly turn into a shopping spree? Before you know it, you filled your cart with all sorts of goodies and your budget is blown out of the water. It's a common scenario, and it's one that's easily avoided by simply cutting back on the number of times you visit the grocery store. Imagine this. Instead of popping into the store several times a week, you limit your grocery shopping to just once a week or even less. It's a small change, but it can have a big impact on your budget. By reducing the number of trips you make to the store, you're reducing the number of opportunities you have to make impulse purchases. And let's be honest, impulse purchases are often the culprit when it comes to overspending on groceries. But how do you make sure you have everything you need if you're only shopping once a week? Well, that's where planning comes into play. Before you head to the store, take some time to plan out your meals for the week. Make a list of everything you'll need and stick to it when you're shopping. Not only will this help you stay on track with your budget, but it can also help reduce food waste, another common issue that can drain your wallet. And remember, just because you're cutting back on the frequency of your grocery shopping doesn't mean you have to sacrifice variety in your meals. With a little creativity and some strategic planning, you can still enjoy a wide range of delicious and nutritious meals while keeping your grocery bill in check. Try it out and you might be surprised at how much you save. Moving on to tip number five, canceling unused subscriptions. Now this may seem like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how many of us have subscriptions that we barely use or don't use at all. These can range from magazines to streaming services to gym memberships. Even if they only cost a few dollars each month over the course of a year, it really adds up. Think about it. A $10 monthly subscription is $120 a year. And if you have several of those, well, you can do the math. That's money that could be put to better use, like saving for a rainy day or paying off debt. But how do you go about canceling these unused subscriptions? First, you need to identify them. Go through your bank statements or use apps that help you track your subscriptions. Once you've identified them, decide which ones you really need and which ones you can do without. Remember, the goal here isn't to deprive yourself of things you enjoy, but rather to make sure you're not wasting money on things you don't use or need. So, if you haven't watched that streaming service in months or you can't remember the last time you read that magazine, it might be time to say goodbye. Canceling subscriptions can usually be done online or over the phone. Some companies might try to convince you to stay by offering discounts or freebies. Stay firm and remember why you're canceling in the first place. If you're worried about missing out, remember that you can always resubscribe in the future if you find that you really do miss it. But chances are, once it's gone, you won't even notice it's missing. So, take a moment to review your subscriptions and cut off the ones you no longer need. Your wallet will thank you. Tip number six is a simple but effective one. Always shop with a list. Now, you might be thinking, a list? Really? But hear me out. This humble piece of paper or note on your phone has the power to save you a surprising amount of money. How? Well, let's dive into it. 
When you shop without a list, you're leaving your wallet vulnerable to the whims of your appetite or the lure of sale signs. You might be drawn to those shiny new gadgets or that fancy gourmet cheese. And before you know it, your cart is overflowing with items you didn't plan to buy. This, my friends, is impulse buying. It's a silent budget killer, stealthily adding to your shopping bill without you even realizing it. On the other hand, shopping with a list acts as a protective shield against these unplanned purchases. When you jot down what you need before stepping foot in the store, you're setting clear boundaries for your shopping trip. You're telling yourself, these are the items I need and that's it. You're setting a budget-friendly intention, but the magic of the list doesn't stop there. It also saves you time. Anyone who's roamed the aisles aimlessly, trying to remember what they need, knows this all too well. With a list, you can navigate the store efficiently, grab what you need, and get out. This means less time exposed to potential impulse buys. And let's not forget the satisfaction of ticking off items on your list. It's a small victory every time you cross off an item, knowing you're sticking to your plan and saving money. So the next time you're about to head out for a grocery run or a shopping spree, pause. Take a moment to write down what you need. It doesn't have to be fancy or detailed. Just a simple list will do. And then stick to it. You'll be amazed at how much you can save. Remember, a list is your best defense against impulse buying. Our seventh tip involves getting a little crafty. Now, before you start worrying about your lack of artistic skills, remember that DIY doesn't necessarily mean you're creating a masterpiece. It's more about finding practical, cost-effective solutions to everyday needs. Let's think about some of the things we often spend money on. Furniture, home decor, gifts, clothes, even food. These are all areas where a bit of DIY spirit can lead to substantial savings. You see, when you buy a pre-made item, you're not just paying for the materials used, but also the labor, the brand, and various other hidden costs. By doing it yourself, you eliminate these extra expenses and exert control over your spending. For instance, instead of buying a bookshelf, why not try building one? It might seem daunting, but with a little bit of research and effort, you'll find it's not as hard as it seems. Plus, it's an opportunity to customize it to your exact needs and taste. And it's not just about big projects. Even small everyday tasks like cooking your meals instead of ordering takeout, mending your clothes instead of buying new ones, or making your own cleaning supplies can add up to significant savings over time. Don't know where to start? The internet is a treasure trove of DIY resources. From step-by-step -step tutorials to online communities ready to lend a hand, you'll find all the guidance you need. And remember, it's not just about the money. It's also about the satisfaction of creating something with your own hands, learning new skills, and becoming more self-reliant. Of course, it's important to know your limits. If a project requires specialized skills or tools, or if doing it yourself could lead to safety issues, it might be better to leave it to the professionals. But for many everyday needs, DIY is a viable, budget-friendly option. So the next time you need something, consider if you can make it yourself. Not only will you save money, but you might also discover a new hobby, learn a useful skill, or simply experience the joy of creating something from scratch. And that in itself is priceless. Tip number eight is for the car owners out there. Now we all know how much of a dent car repairs can put in our wallets, but have you ever considered that the key to avoiding those hefty costs could be as simple as regular maintenance? Let's dive into this. Think of your car like a human body. It needs regular checkups to ensure it's running smoothly. And just like how you'd go to the doctor for a physical, your car needs its routine inspection too. So what does regular car maintenance look like? Well, it starts with the basics. Regular oil changes, for instance, are crucial. Oil is the lifeblood of your car. It keeps all those moving parts in your engine running smoothly and prevents them from grinding against each other, which can lead to costly repairs down the line. And let's not forget about the tires. Keeping your tires properly inflated and rotating them can extend their lifespan, saving you from shelling out on a new set before you need to. Plus, properly inflated tires can improve your gas mileage, allowing you to save even more at the pump. Then there's the small stuff, like changing your air filters and checking your brakes. These may seem like minor tasks, but they can play a significant role in preventing larger, more expensive problems in the future. Of course, you might be thinking, but regular maintenance costs money too. That's true, but consider this. The cost of routine maintenance is often far less than the cost of major repairs that could have been avoided with that maintenance. Essentially, you're paying a little now to save a lot later. So, 
If you're a car owner looking to save some money, don't skimp on the maintenance. Treat your car with the care it deserves and it'll treat your wallet with the same respect. And remember, this isn't just about saving money, it's also about safety. A well-maintained car is a safer car and you can't put a price on that. Keep in mind a well-maintained car is a money-saving car. Coming in at number 9 is a tip for those juggling multiple debts. When you're trying to live frugally and save money, one of the most significant hurdles can be managing multiple debts. Credit cards, student loans, car loans, or even personal loans can all add up and make it difficult to keep track of. Not to mention, each of these debts comes with its own interest rate, which can vary greatly. This is where debt consolidation comes into play. Debt consolidation is a method of taking all your various debts and combining them into one single debt. What makes this such an effective strategy? Well, there are a couple of key reasons. Firstly, debt consolidation can lead to a reduction in interest rates. When you consolidate your debts, you're essentially taking out a new loan to pay off all your existing loans. This new loan will have its own interest rate, which ideally is lower than the average interest rate of your existing debts. Over time, this can save you a significant amount of money. Secondly, consolidating your debts simplifies your payments. Instead of keeping track of various payments, each with its own due date and interest rate, you only have to worry about one single monthly payment. This can help you avoid late fees, reduce stress, and make your financial situation more manageable. But remember, debt consolidation is not a magic bullet. It's a tool to help you manage your debt more effectively, but it doesn't make the debt disappear. You still need to make regular payments and ideally aim to pay more than the minimum requirement whenever possible. It's also important to note that debt consolidation is not for everyone. It's best suited for those with a good credit score, as this can help you secure a lower interest rate. Additionally, you should only consider it if you're confident you can keep up with the new payments. Remember, consolidating your debts can be a smart step towards financial freedom. But like any financial decision, it's important to do your research, consider your options, and make the choice that's right for you and your financial situation. And finally, our 10th tip, meal planning. Let's dive right in. Think of meal planning like a roadmap to your kitchen. It's all about knowing the destination before you start the journey. When you plan your meals in advance, you're not just saving money, you're also saving time and reducing food waste. Here's how it works. You think about the meals you want to prepare for the week. Then you make a shopping list based on those meals. This way you're only buying what you need and you're less likely to be swayed by impulse purchases. Moreover, you're utilizing ingredients across multiple meals, which means you're reducing waste. Leftover veggies from Monday's stir-fry can be Tuesday's omelet filling. Plus, with a plan in hand, you're less likely to resort to costly and often less healthy takeout on those busy weeknights. So, invest a little time in meal planning and watch your savings grow. And there you have it, 10 frugal living tips to help you save money. From using cash instead of cards to help you stay aware of your spending, to selling items you no longer need for a bit of extra money, these tips are all about helping you stretch your dollars further. Don't forget to check out coupons and reduce your grocery shopping trips to save even more. Cancel any unused subscriptions, always shop with a list, and try your hand at do-it-yourself projects wherever possible. Caring for your car can prevent costly repairs down the line, and consolidating your debts can help you keep track of your financial obligations more easily. And last but not least, meal planning can cut down on unnecessary food expenses. These are simple, practical steps that anyone can take towards a more frugal lifestyle. I encourage you all to try them out and see the difference they can make. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, hit the like button, and share it with your friends. Stay frugal and see you in our next video.